Hey everybody, welcome to Small Family Adventures. I am Steven, I'm husband and father here of the family, and um, just welcome. We are about to start our Bible study. So if you have a Bible, get it out or go to BibleGateway.com and go to John chapter 2 towards the end of the chapter. Okay, so we are looking at Jesus cleansing the temple. This is where he went and he turned the tables and he he drove out the money changers. He drove out animals that were being there um, that they would end up being sacrificed to God. And and the thing that, ha that he did this is because they had made the temple into a business instead of a worship, a place of worship. And... Um, and I ended last week, and I want to continue there for just a second, and then we'll go on to the rest of this section. And that is that that this was done in the, the court of the Gentiles, right? This is where the Gentiles could come and worship God. And um, as I said last week, I'm going through um, a, a, a somebody who's a lot smarter than I, uh, William Barclay, who was talking about this section of John, <coughs> excuse me, and so um, I wanted to read what he said, and and let us think deeply, how are we, uh, because it was really a place that was distracting, here you have animals, you have them making noises, maybe the doves are flying around, maybe there's yelling, there's loud talk, as people are exchanging money, the cling, cling, cling of the coins, you know, um, very distracting, unwelcoming, right? So, um, William Barclay asked us to think of this and, and take away from that. Is there anything in our church life, a snobbishness, an exclusiveness, a coldness, a lack of welcome, a tendency to make the congregation into a closed club, an arrogance, a fastidiousness, which keeps the seeking stranger out? Let us remember the wrath of Jesus against those who made it difficult and <coughs> excuse me. Let us remember the wrath of Jesus against those who make it difficult and even impossible for the seeking stranger to make contact with God. Um, the God of the Jews is God of the Gentiles. What are we doing? Are we making it just a business? Or is this a worship place where we we invite people to come and we worship and we, we worship God and we point people to Jesus. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And the rest of this passage that we're going to go look at now um, in the turning of the tables is um, Jesus doing just that. He is showing how this temple, this stuff is all going away. You don't need to sacrifice animals. Um, so, because I'm here. I am here. I am the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. Once and for all. And so, um, go to verse 18. Um, so the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. So Jesus told them, I'm going to die, but I am going to be raised up again. And the poor disciples didn't know that. They didn't recognize that. Remember later on, we're going to, Jesus tells them, I'm going to die. And they freak out, right? They didn't realize that until after he rose, that Jesus had said this way back here in chapter 2 of John. Um, so, What's what's the takeaway here? Jesus came, and he came so that he could make things right. 
so that we didn't have a temple where we would sacrifice animals, but that we could come to him. He had already, he has already made the sacrifice at this point, at this point in our lives, right? He's making a new way. He changed things. He became the sacrifice that takes away the sin of the world. And really the only one, the true mediator, the only one that could take away our sins, the animals, that was just looking forward and pointing to the cross. And um, and so really just, just think about this. Jesus came for us to worship in spirit and truth, right? And he's setting this up, cleaning the house of God. Like we said, we get, Jesus, turn the tables on me. Turn the tables on my heart so that I may worship in spirit and truth. I know this sounds like, like a repeat of last week, but, but just remember this thing. Why is it important for Jesus to follow Jesus? Because he is God. He is showing this right here in his resurrection that he is God. The Father is going to resurrect him. All right? And so... And, and and do it three days after his passing. Um, so his temple rebuilt so that we can know, well, number one, we are going to be like him, right? When we die, there is a resurrection for us. We will not be stuck with these old dilapidated bodies but we will have a new body, just as Jesus did. And uh, we will have no more tears, sorrow, um, pain. And it's going to be amazing. And we will be with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for eternity, worshiping him, gazing upon his beauty, learning from him whatever he wants to give us and, and teach us. And this is going to be good, guys and gals. This is going to be a good thing. This is a good thing. It's the most holy thing. It's the most wonderful thing. We can't even imagine um, what it's going to be like. Um, but Jesus, he's telling us here, you know, he's going to rebuild the temple. It's going to be my body. And you know what? That is my sign. This is why, you know, and, and the poor... Uh, the Jewish people, the leaders, they did not recognize him. They did not accept this. They would not accept this. Um, in fact, more than that, they, uh, they felt like he was coming after their job. And there was jealousy and envy because people were following him. Um, there were some Jewish leaders, I'm sure, they sticking to the law you know they didn't see that written in scripture in the old testament that there was a pointing there's pointing a time that he jesus himself would come the messiah the uh, lord yeshua hamashiach um, that's jesus the messiah um and that uh he would make all things new um so again what's our takeaway Remember, he's God, he's holy, and we're going to be like him one day, right? And um, and that, that he can be followed, he can be trusted. His word can be trusted, just like uh, the disciples when they look back and like, he did say that, that's right. You know what? He can be trusted. He said what he would do. Um, and I want to finish the chapter off here um, in verse 23 to 25 now when he was in jerusalem at the passover feast many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing remember he was healing people he was um, raising people up you know they would couldn't walk so he'd heal them leprosy um and um but jesus on his part did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. This is declaring his godhood. Jesus is God. 
and really without saying it, it's showing it. I mean, because he knew he could be a bear witness as God, as leader of the universe, as master of the universe, he um, can bear witness to himself because he knows the heart of man. And, and now, what did he know it in his full humanness? Or did the Father make it known to him? We don't know. We only know that he knew, as it is written here. Um, he's God. And, uh, and again, we can trust him for that. Uh, next week, we're going to start in chapter 3, Lord willing. And, uh, but I want to finish up with a prayer um, from the Valley of Vision. And um, this is called The Infinite and the Finite. Thou great I am. Fill my mind with elevation and grandeur at the thought of a being with whom one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. A mighty God who, amidst the lapse of the worlds and the revelations of empires, feels no variableness, but is glorious in immortality. May I rejoice that while men die, the Lord lives, that while all creatures are broken reeds, empty cisterns, fading flowers, withering grass. He is the rock of ages, the fountain of living waters. Turn my heart from vanity, from dissatisfactions, from uncertainties of the present state to an eternal interest in Christ. Let me remember that life is short and unforeseen and is only an opportunity for usefulness. Give me a holy averse to redeem the time, to awake at every call to charity and piety, so that I may feed the hungry, clothe the naked, instruct the ignorant, reclaim the vicious, forgive the offender, diffuse the gospel, um, show neighborly love to all. Let me live a life of self-distrust, dependence on yourself, mortification, crucifixion, prayer. Sister and brothers, you guys have a good week. Next week, we'll go on again, as we said, to John chapter 3. All right, you have a great day. From my family to yours, have an amazing day, and I will see you soon. God bless. Bye.